So what we're going to talk about today, I just wanted to do this interview with you really badly because we've all, we always talk. I mean, we've been talking so much, but we don't, uh, people don't really know that we know each other for such a long time. Some of them uh, think that we don't know each other. We just met. We've suddenly made this uh, citizens initiative and all we here we are, two blondies together. But actually, our friendship goes a long way because we've known each other for quite a while ta- uh, while now, right? Right. We know each other for four years and something uh, now. And uh, we have so much, so many ki- ki- kilometers, miles uh, between uh, uh, among us uh, together in the fight, in the streets, in the um, protests, European protests. And... Um, Zoom meetings, uh, hours and hours, uh, fighting and trying to find ways to um, stand up for the people and for our freedom and human rights and against the system. So uh, sometimes I, I I get quite shocked by by realize that people don't don't even dream uh, of our work. Uh, maybe because we don't get paid for what we do um so that's why they don't pay attention i think what has happened over the last years that we've been uh, doing all this work and you're quite right we've been doing it on our own uh time and on our own money and uh, just going and doing and i mean you know for people that don't know you've been uh, the person that's been organizing worldwide demonstrations in portugal and yet, uh, th- th- this is the the main thing that I always talk about. Please remember that the faces you see on the stages very often are there because there's been a lot, a lot of work. And so we're, what we've got is we, we both, me as Polish citizen and you as Portuguese, we're facing similar things. And I think what I wanted to, for people to hear from you today is the way, where Portugal is, especially in the scope of migration, and something that is happening right now, which is quite a few weeks ago, um, the European Union has pushed through the pact, which is the migration pact. And for those who don't know, it is one of the things that will be implemented within the whole 27 countries in the European Union. Now, the way it will work is that we will be made as countries to uh take in migrants from uh different countries we're we're in poland don't see it that much because we've pretty much had the conflict between ukraine and russia therefore what we've got is more refugees and uh from coming from uh that side which is the ukrainian side yet i do not uh, think people understand what's currently, as far as migration is concerned, happening in countries like Portugal. So this is something I wanted you to talk about. Okay. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, well, before I, I go into the main the, 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 the problem today, I have to say that we are the Portuguese uh, uh, country of immigrant people. But as I called, we are, we've been uh, over the years, the good immigrants because we go to the, to the other people countries, we respect the, the values, the, the traditions, the laws and the rules. And um, uh, the Portuguese went abroad and still are um, to work. And um, they were always really hard working people. But of course, when, for example, in Canada, a lot of people from Azores, from the islands, uh, and Madeira, but more from Azores, I believe. And um, they go to Canada. If some, if one of them, and Luxembourg, if one of them um, makes some criminal act, they are Im- immediately repre- re- are you say repatriated, right? They um, back removed, to, removed. removed from the country. Um, by saying this, the Portuguese people are not against um, the, the, the immigration. We couldn't because we are a people of immigration. Um, we do immigrate. What happens is 
that um, and we had the colonies, the African colonies, and when it was uh, when we surrendered badly the co the colonies in a very bad way, we had two types of income people: the African people that choose to be Portuguese, and um, the other ones that were Portuguese that they called the returned return people and it was the portuguese uh white return people that were really badly received in portugal not the african people so some of these african people they were uh, they were some no the majority they were uh, absolutely amazing people they work they 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 were integrated in portugal um I, I i do have a, a son-in-law that is from angola and um a working person um and and even so people um believe that we were uh we are a racist uh, country we 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 are not against we have the brazilian people the, the first brazilians that came to portugal as immigrants they were not the good immigrant immigrants, but then the first the first round of immigrants were um, uh, like um, sexual um, um, market. Do you understand? And um, it was not good, not for us, not uh, well for, for the Portuguese men. It was good anyway, not for us as. Uh, in uh, in in the jobs uh, that are specifically um, is that what we're talking? We're, we're talking a lot of immigrants from Brazil, or the ladies who would then go and work in a sex trade. Yeah, some of them right. because they like. Some of them were were promised other jobs, and then when they arrive here, they were treated like slave slave uh, sex slaves. Mm -hmm. um, but then they start to come to Portugal, amazing Brazilian people. Now what happens is that, um, and uh, well, there were many, many Brazilian people coming to Portugal. And of course, but but that's a, a, a problem um, of also the governments, the socialism governments, because they give, um, help me here with the words, darling, because between us, we speak so many languages, sometimes we, we forget uh, the words. Um, uh, the people that live of um, money from the state without work, how do you yes, call that? Yes, yes. Benefits, from yeah. Yes. So, so, thank you, darling. So, um, the government gives, um, create another um, class of Portuguese people, and now of every country people uh that is the uh, the benefit people that live of benefits so obviously if you uh, earn uh, without work the same money that you you earn you will will earn if you go to work you don't want to work so the brazilian came and they start to do what the portuguese people didn't want to do it's not their fault it's the government fault and our fault because we keep on voting the same people, right? So there, the Portuguese people are wrong because if we want to work, the others will not come to take our work because it's already occupied, right? So I think I think this is a similar theme that we can see through many countries. I mean, me living in UK, I, I can see that as well. It very often happens that the benefit system is so well and so, so good, so generous that a lot of people decide, you know what, I don't want to do work. I'm just going to stay at home and I'm just going to live off the what I'm getting. And therefore, there is a, this open market for the jobs. And then where the um, migrants uh, or immigrants arrive, of course, they feel, fill in that market of the less desirable jobs, whether these are the clean, cleaning jobs, etc., and so on and so on. So I think in that case, in that, if we look at it from that perspective, a lot of countries are struggling with it. But I wasn't aware about Portuguese having such a good benefit system. Uh, again, well, it's because, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's so good, so good that uh, we have uh, quite close from here now um, 
like 40 kilometers uh, from here. Um, we have uh, a lot of Indians and Pakistani, Hindustani people that uh, do not bother to work because they are on the streets every day and cleaning their cars. They have all the families here. and um, But the government give them uh, 600, I think, Oh, it's five, 600, I believe, 500 and 570 something euros each month in their bank account. So if they are three or four in the same family, right? Yes. They don't work. They live in the same house. It's very good money because they live in little places where the rent the rents are so, so low so low and uh, these people they live like 40 or 50 people in the two bedroom apartment that's re that's the reality this is a, is is something is really shocking um but we so also we start the, the influx of the nations which are the nations that are because i think uh, a while ago we had this discussion about migration and you did say there was quite a lot of uh, men uh, or from the Arab countries that were in, uh, coming through to Portugal. Um, yeah. Again, my knowledge that it's, for example, people from India or from Pakistan, I didn't know that, right? Because we look at the like a geographical, uh, at the map, and you think, wow, Indian people all the way to uh, Portugal, right? Yeah. You know, but I get it, I get it. So what is the main influx right now? Is it still the Arab countries, uh, asylum seekers? That Muslim, are man, Muslim, man, uh, Muslim man people, yes. And um, but uh, do not forget that the the Indian uh, population now uh, it's a, a overstep already the Chinese population so there are many many many. Uh, but uh, talking about the Chinese, we start after the Brazilian. We had a lots of Chinese people coming, but uh, no one talks about the Chinese. But a uh, lots of uh, commercial person people here in Portugal were really upset with the Chinese, but the reality is that they come to Portugal to work. They do work. They do not um, commit um, crimes. Uh, they uh, We don't listen about that. Uh, well, we don't even listen any registration of a death of the Chinese people for many, many years. I don't know if they don't die, if they, they, they find out the secret of life. Um, yeah, the the truth the sorry the truth is that there is there's no funerals of Chinese people in Portugal. Maybe they go back. Maybe they you know maybe they come and they uh, whatever do business and they return back. I don't know. I mean, it's a big <laughs> maybe, world, right? Maybe, maybe. But they are good immigrant people. Um, they, it's we don't listen. We don't hear in the in the news that the Chinese went to the to the train station and start to stab someone or to yeah. someone. You know, for example, last we night... This, we, we had this, uh, before, I'm sorry, I will just interject okay. quickly. We had a very big uh, issue quite for the last week or so. We had one of the uh, people who was here as an asylum seeker in in UK, and this person has wa was walking up the street and spilled somebody's face and i think uh, while we were uh, the public was very angry about the situation i mean this man technically has still not been found there's been a chase for him they've been looking for him for like a couple of weeks now this is i think second week and yet this is a man who while he did what he did has managed to spill it on himself so it's not very difficult to um, recognize him because his eye i believe is gone or whatever um, but what then came to an action what came out to the light later on is the fact that he uh, has been in the country that he's from um, accused of uh, abusing physically in we all know what manner previously, you know, uh, a, a woman. And therefore, uh, the big questions came in. How did it happen that someone with such a violent, uh, explicit physical history was even uh, allowed into the country, right? Because the very often we we see that even a few days. I think the last few days on the internet, there's been this. I can't remember which country it is, but there was a guy walking up the on the tubes in the tube uh, platform, and just absolutely walking in and beating women. Barcelona, Spain, Barcelona, yes, Spain. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these things well, are happening more and more. And then we see this division between people saying, OK, well, we need to. Well, maybe not people. We see this division between uh, between European Union as a European Parliament uh, trying to implement this massive act for migration and asylum and so on and so on and saying to us, well, we need to take people because they are in need. And yet what we have on the other side of the scope, we have these sorts of situations which do tend to make people, women, feel uh, threatened and uncomfortable. And then we have this big, massive amount of groups that are saying we do not want migration. And then these people then are being labeled as the bad ones. So my question is, like, how is the oldest uh, my immigration or migrate? Well, we, for now, we know invasion. It's invasion. Let's call yeah, let's use different words. How is that affecting your society, the society in Portugal? Because I know immensely, you know, we've had this mm -hmm. immensely, darling. Because as I was telling you, I was trying to go step by step so people can understand. Um, when they start saying, "Well, Portuguese are the ra racist country," I mean, when people start to talk about racism, it's kind of make my nerves because if you talk about racism, you are a racist. So don't stop talk about that. You know, just live your life because what we're we talking about is a, a, is a social um, social behaviors, right? Uh, because right. we we do have people. If you enter in the shop and your behave is bad, it doesn't matter if you are white, black, or blue. Your behave is out of order, so everyone will look at you. Period. Mm. Right. So do not come and complain. You have to respect where you go. If I'm going, if I run, if I, if I'm an immigrant that goes to a country, I respect what's going on in that country. We arrive to a point thing. that we are afraid to take an Uber. We refuse Ubers. And it's very difficult to control educated people. Right? So the goal is to... Finish with Europeans, period. And this is, is just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because... I think the problem is people don't understand how many people actually live in Portugal. Because uh, So so just to kind of give people a scope, uh, it's about 10 million, right, that you have? We should it be. Isn't we more should than be. That. Yeah. yeah, we should be. But now we are much more than that. And what is happening is that... Um, Morocco, Moroccan people, and the 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 the, the crimes and the insu insecurity it it increases every mm -hmm. single day, every single day, and we don't know who are these people. No one check if they are uh, terrorists, if they are uh, abusers, if they are. Uh, if they they don't care, they just don't care. They bring them, they bring them. They are only men, you know. The majority young so men. Background. Nobody checks their background. Like no. I mean, this this example is very good of this specific person here who was allowed to come in, and then it appeared that they already had a violent history and they've been convicted and or accused. And actually, you know, there was another one which is quite interesting, um, which has been in media in UK for a while for a little bit as well. Now, the uh, people who have this uh, bad history or already been in jail, etc., cannot be sent back to their country because in their country they would be for example executed or maybe treated not do you understand their yes. life would be so, so therefore this person is being now uh, kept in here because his life is in danger yet this person has committed a crime over here whether it was a crime on a woman or whatever etc i think these are the interesting parts because we have created this european union that is talking about fairness and helping disadvantaged nations and help You're frozen now. Helping the asylum seeker and the migrants. Oh, I can I can hear you. Um, okay. uh, there is uh, mm, there is no care for us as nations. Yet there is a lot of care for everybody else outside, right? Yes, yes. And I, I, there's a, another thing that um, I was listening to you, and um, there's a, a, also uh, we had um, a lot of Ukrainian people. Um, mm -hmm. 
in the, the, the pediatric uh, hospitals and schools were closing here in Portugal. We have very a lot of homeless people. Actually, Lisbon, the subways are full of homeless people, full of homeless, homeless people. But yet the government and some, I call them the Ukrain, Ukrainian hysterical uh, uh, groupies, uh, you know, they were on the street, we have to help Ukraine. And I always say here, guys, do not become hysterical over uh, the, do not react over the first uh, um, feeling. You know, as um, we sometimes say, uh, there's a, 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 a jar with the, the, the black ants on the top and the white ants on the top, and they go around their lives. No one cares about the other one. They are, but then comes someone and stir the pot and they start fighting and eat each other. So be aware who is stirring the pot. Mm -hmm. I no, always say that's I your enemy. Really that's your yeah. enemy. So here we are. If you go back, you look back, when we accuse, I, as you know, I'm not pro-Putin. Putin, I'm not pro-nothing. I'm pro-peace and pro intelligence and common sense uh and now before with this ukraine uh war um we received as you guys uh, lots of ukrainian people and before with the with the with the balkans wars we had already moldavians and uh, uh russians lots of russian people uh People from Poland, we have everything in here in Portugal. This is a cocktail, you know, cocktail bar. So, and now we also have Palestinians and Israel. Oh, really? oh yes, we do have a lots of Palestinians. And they go to the streets and they they do uh, protests with uh, the men's dr dressed black and uh, with flags. And uh, with the uh, cantics, you know, they sing some stuff, blah, 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 blah. we don't understand. Mm -hmm. but, and they claim rights and they do everything. In the other hand, we have the Israeli people also, you know. Mm -hmm. So I will, this, this must, Portugal now is, is everything but Portugal. You're a really proper melting pot. It seems like you've got all the names living in, in Portugal. I mean, I know yes. it's a beautiful country. Yes, but, uh, well, we are starting to become not a beautiful country, uh, not a safe country, if the, 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 the next government do not take measures about this um, invasion, because people that come... Uh, Listen, uh, we had uh, a Moroccan that start to come to Portugal. Uh, they were running uh, from a war. And we were like, what war? There's no war in Morocco. Uh, so in that, this is, it, it's kind of the, the ridiculous, you know, it's so ridiculous. But anyway, we are very close to Morocco. Uh, Spain, every single day, it's it's massive it's massive but they enter from spain they come to portugal and then it's portugal that gives the documents for them to go to other european countries so we already had complaints of other european countries say that portugal is the door to the invasion because we have to change this we have to mm. change this Right, and you can be sure that pretty soon is going to happen to the Portuguese people. What happens to the French? They are going to be much more than we are, and we will have to leave our country. I do not understand what kind of European Union is this that decides the ends of the European people and European race. If we want to talk about racism, you have to look to the European Parliament, to Ursula von der Leyen, and to the European Union, because they are, they are very committed to, to finish with Europeans. 
There is the racism, the real racism, right? And that's very dangerous because we are not mm -hmm. going to be able to protect our children and our grandchildren. The legacy that we are leaving to them, it's a very ugly legacy. And it's a legacy of cowardice. The people are coward. This generation I've made of coward people. I think the to blame is the European Union. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I think there's only two ways of doing the dealing with this system. First of all, is either go have as many European Parliament members elected from your countries in the next election that will represent the people, not their own interests, that will not fall underneath lobbyists and big organizations. Or if if we do get a lot of people to think like us uh, and we fail to make that change within the EU, that is an absolute sign that it's time to leave the EU. Uh, but you need to try to fix it. If you're unable to fix it, right? this is why the next five years are so crucial. If you're unable to turn it around and, yes, yeah, stop the migration, you know, figure out why we have this influx of migration, to be honest, I don't really want my country to be taking illegal, as they call them, or legal migrants, illegal migrants, um, because unless I can be 100% sure that they are able to assimilate into my country, because I moved myself abroad to England many, many years ago, I did not expect anybody to speak to me in Polish. I did not expect anybody to respect my culture. I assimilated to the culture of the country that I was will, wanting and wishing to live at, in, right? And I think this is the bit that we're missing. Within the scope of this wokeness that we're looking at now, we are so tippy-toeing around everybody. I'm really sorry. If I wish to move to African country or Asian country or to America, I will have to assimilate to the rules that are in that specific area. But I do not see this happening in Europe. I see an absolute opposite. I see shaming us for being mm, proud of being Portuguese or Polish, I see I see the shame shaming part. I see the way that we are called is being horrible, discriminative, racist, all sorts of names because we are wishing to keep our cultures the way they are. It doesn't mean we don't want other people to join our cultures but or or to come and live where we are, but we want our culture to be respected. Right? Exactly. Right. Very well uh, said. And um I always like to listen to you because as our talks are immensely, immense, very big uh, years of talk, uh, we always, um, you listen, I listen, and then we are, we are having ideas. Um, and uh, I was uh, listening to you once again, and I was thinking, uh, it's amazing how you in a certain place can make excuses for uh, a war because the Palestinian and the Israel people that are in Portugal in the same town, they are not fighting each other. Yes. And we should all stop, breathe in, breathe out, and think about this. Yeah. But in the other hand, one country only can take so much people. And Portugal is very small, is a very small country. And the worst of all is that we are, uh, after us, we don't have nowhere to run because it's the sea. Yes. And this government um, are not thinking about that. When they uh, let so many men, aggressive men, young men come to this country and we the Portuguese people, we do not have anywhere to go but through ourselves into the sea. So, we should demand for this invasion to stop right now because we cannot put up with any more of this. I think the problem, Vicky, we have at the moment while we talk about migration and it uh, migrants and asylum is that uh, the gov uh, you know 
We should we should demand is an easy thing to say. I think the problem is we are currently have governments, but not only governments. We have a European Union, commi- you know, Commission. We have people who are in power on the side, and the division between the rulers and the citizens is huge now, massively huge. And if this doesn't, uh, you know, if um, if nothing is being done, it doesn't change. If nothing changes. Um, then uh, yes, we will have you know revolutions on the street again. Yes, but you and I, we went uh, like uh, two times to the European Parliament, uh, mm. Brussels and Strasbourg. The first time we went to Brussels with the ECI, um, that uh, you so well uh, are the brain behind the ECI, and um, you, 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 you know that the Portuguese, uh, the Portuguese uh, European parliamenters, they were the ones that put more problems. Once they knew it was a Portuguese woman person that was going to the European Parliament. And that was absolutely um, so extraordinary, but I want to be polite, right? Because Almost no one knows in the in this European Parliament who are the faces of the Portuguese parliamenters because they do absolutely nothing. And they are there and they do not defend one single Portuguese. But this is I think this is beautiful what you're saying, and I'm gonna stop you to tell you what I think. If uh, we have the same problem, uh, I mean, you know, Portuguese and Polish, and I think other people, if they'll watch this and, you know, uh, uh, they will probably be able to 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 also um, say it's similar with their countries. The people that are re- within the, the parliaments, they do not represent us. Now, I will say that once again, there is election coming in July, June, 6th of June. And therefore, I think the message is very clear that people should watch the interviews like the one with you and understand, do the little research, check who the Portuguese Portuguese parliament members are and what actually have they done for Portuguese people within the European parliament? Because like I decided to do this, go on this trip of checking which Polish parliament members have actually done anything good for Poland. I have not discovered much. I have discovered that there were the, the most of them were pushing the green deals. I have discovered uh, one of the parliament members that have been had the audacity to publicly actually say, "I didn't go to European Parliament to help Polish people. I went to the Parliament to to help Europeans." And that's something that made my jaw drop as a citizen, as a Polish person. It made my jaw drop that we managed to choose someone who has got, who is, uh, you know, who has got balls to go publicly and say she didn't go there to to help us and the country that chose her she went there to do best for the europe so i think the misunderstanding between the people both in poland and portugal is that they really need to focus they really need to see who the parliament members that they chose are and understand that they haven't done anything for them because we will not stop the european election this is the very important part there is no way we can stop it it's going to happen People will go vote, and this this machine is turning and going and going. The problem, the only way we can now only stop it is by making sure that this June, uh, when people do go to vote, they do not vote for none of these none of these puppets that currently are in the, in the in the uh, parliament representing Portugal. Because you are right, I do not know any Portuguese parliament member who was even willing to speak with us to talk to us about None. support the anti-corruption package that we were so None. much pushing for. None. And even so, the even the the the, poli- the political parties that um are um, I actually contact a member of one. I, I'm not going to say each each political party uh, is because I don't want to influence because we are having now um um elections uh in March. But um, but uh, it's one of the parties that is uh, uh, which campaign is made against corruption. But I still didn't had answer about taking the ECI to the Portuguese Parliament, though we were already for twice twice in the European Parliament. 
Yes. You know, and this is something that we oh, and the people from that party when we went the first time and they and they saw my my video, they, it went viral, and they were like, "Who is this amazing woman? Who, what 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 the, the courage she have to go there in the European Parliament and say all of the everything of this?" And they all wanted to know who was I. And of course, a big part, a big part, they knew because uh, fortunately we have also people, uh, good people, uh, on the streets for these four years and fighting in our side. And you, oh, but she's Vicky Catyon. You say, oh, oh, really? And she, oh, really? And uh, um, but um, in this second uh, video, went had like over one hundred and something views, you know. Again, in the European Parliament, again, that little piece that that is uh, talking about the Portuguese government is so corrupt. Mm. It went viral. But still, they say they are fighting corruption. They want to finish with corruption, but they don't want to give the legislative power to the people. Yes. We want the ECI to go through because we do not want to be pressed uh, uh, pressed by political colors. Mm. The people have to have the right to be present in all these reunions, these uh, political decisions. People who've never seen uh, anything that we do, I think it's important to mention that when we say ECI, we mean the European Citizens Initiative. Citizens Initiative. Uh, that I will put a link in this uh, video for people to go in and see the website, which what uh, has uh, really is just two things. First one is uh, informed consent in regards to health issues. And the second one is uh, say no to the corruption within the EU by creating an anti-corruption package. So I guess let's just put that in. But yes, you are correct. Please continue. Yes. Yes. And uh, for example, uh, the, we with this law, which is ECI, the, the citizens uh, initiative european citizens initiative um we have to be present in the decisions and the, the they have to talk to the people not to the power only not to the the doctors not to the 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 the, the politicians they have to talk to the people they have to inform the people and this yes. is very important uh, that the, the, everyone understands what is the ECI. Uh, and so that's why it's so important for us to go to our Europe, to our uh, parliamenters in our own countries, because we already went to the European Parliament and we were already submit the ECI to the, to the European Commission and it was approved. Now the last step is the signatures, because of mm -hmm. course they are not going to make our life easier. They, okay, now you go, you, you went with all these steps, but now the last one, you have to have one million signatures for all over Europe. And they give, for example, to Portugal much more people than we are, actually, in order for it to be more difficult to get the signatures, right? Of course, we need help. We need help from these political parties that say, we are against corruption. You are good. Then help us to get the signature so we can give the power, the voice to the people. Yes, right. but these parties, these parties talk about talking and fighting corruption. And I think uh, we all learned that, that it's always just a talk, what they will do, how they will do it, and yet they never do it. How do we sum all of this up in the bigger picture of European Union, the migration crisis, um, you know, the, the fact that people, even in Portugal, are not feeling secure uh, financially, through the migration issues, but also through the fact that the parliament people, they just don't have that connection with you as citizens. How do we, no. how do you sum that up for the end? No, I have uh, uh, to wrap up this. Uh, there's uh, something that I have to say. It's very important that um, the good immigrant people, they are not cont contempt. They are not happy with the bad immigrants are doing because it's uh, they are burning their image and their work and their lives. 
it it's destroying the reputation of the, the reputations of the immigrants right so what i suggest is that the good immigrants to come along with us and say no 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 we want to defend the country that we we was chosen by us to become our country to come and work our children to born here to be raised here and we want for them the same security that we had before the invasion, because this is not an immigration problem. This is an invasion problem. Do not be afraid of the words. Do not call immigration. This is an invasion, period. And is destroying the real immigrant, the working immigrant, the, 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 the good person, the person that we trust our families, our lives with, our friends. So all these immigrants should come and demand also to the Portuguese, to the Spanish, to the Poland, to the governments of their own countries, of their chosen, for them to stop the invasion. How do you explain this invasion? Because they are they're not running away from no one. Do you see children or women? They run away, but they don't care about the children. They don't care about the parents. They don't care about the, the wives. So they are running away from what? From nothing. Absolutely nothing. Are we going, Europe, are we going to keep uh, uh, allowing this invasion? No, we cannot. We cannot. Europe is under uh, a, a, a massive threat again. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that that's the main thing. Uh, I mean, we 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 we're in the world where we struggle to kind of put put it into proper wording because I don't really think we need to. There's no point of calling it anymore, though. We can see which way the world is going, um, and uh, let's see how we can uh, work together as uh, people in different countries. But being in different countries, we seem to be struggling with the same issues, uh, whichever way yes. you go. We, uh, whether it is, as we said, the issue of the migration, whatever we see, we have the big, it, it, sort of a big brother, as you mentioned. The European Union is trying to become one. Uh, keep yeah. put the rules, and there's there's this voice coming out from one place, which is Brussels, and that voice tells you what you can do and how you should do it, and which way you should do it. And if you do not like it, you will be penalized. We will not give you money, but we will send you more. You know, you don't want to take migrants. That's okay. You don't need to, but you pay us if you don't want to. You know, so um, yeah. these are the rules and we all know the rich countries will pay and the poor countries won't have the money to pay. Therefore, they will have to take that excess of uh, people uh, that are currently coming in. And I think that's the problem that we're looking. We're creating a very business like uh, model of the European Union. If you're a rich country, you won't take the 30,000 immigrants for example, you can pay. But if you're Portugal, who is already struggling with uh, economical system and, you know, politically and with actually supporting their own citizens, well, you don't have the, you know, what is it, 30,000 mig migrants times 22,000 euros for each of one? You know, you and don't have a that. problem. Darling, yeah, I'm sorry. It's... You have yeah. to, I have to add, you have to add that, that we only have 4,000 militaries. Mm. In the army, only four thousand men. So, um, your military only has four thousand men in the military. Yeah, oh, that's an interesting one. So, really, technically, you could not. If there would be an, an issue, you, your yes. militarily wise, you wouldn't be able to protect yourself. No, right? no, we are we are um, hostage of these people right now. Mm. Right now, if they want to invade our ho homes, they can. Uh, they can. So I guess, the, yeah, I guess the summing up point is this. Uh, you definitely need to use uh, well, both us, uh, Portuguese, Polish, I guess a lot of uh, countries are talking about it. Use the European election wisely and make sure that you... Uh, we have no choice use... in Portugal, darling. Uh, listen. People like you and myself, we're not supported by uh, political parties. Uh, we never went into political parties. Uh, 
uh, and though no, I, 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 everyone knows, I, I, I do, I, 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 I don't like the left. I don't like socialists. I, I really don't. Uh, but I'm not in any political party. But I cannot go and in myself uh, and go there and say, oh, I want to be European uh, parliamentary. That's not that doesn't work that way. So I'll have to to have support. But you can be sure that there is no one that is going to be there like you and like me. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we've been doing this fight with earning no money. We travel from our pockets. We do everything from our own heads and our meanings and we never give up we do have a cause we do have a cause and when our own countries and our own polit politicals and and parliamentarians do not recognize this work that we do uh personally in portugal uh, we're not going to be very lucky. I'm maybe uh, I'm thinking about one or two people from a political party, but from there, one is a woman, of course. But uh, apart from that, it's going to be the same. They are not going to fight for us, and this is something that the the European Union Union do not discuss when they send to us all of um, these um, invaders, um, the, 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 the European Union should demand that the country will have the double of the military forces, that there is the, there is the, the double of the number of the military forces uh, of the, the invaders. Yeah the migrants yep. that come into the country. In here is the opposite. And this is really dangerous, but it's something that the Portuguese people should think about it. Should think about it. Because this is our situation. We are behind us is the sea, and we only have 4,000 military uh, men and women. Mm -hmm. No more. And this is a very dangerous situation. So when people think, oh, Portugal, do not think that Portugal is a paradise because from one second, this can turn hell. Very quickly. Okay, so, you know, let's not leave people who are watching this with like, a, you know, doom and gloom. Tell me, Vicky, well, how do you see see this uh, the all going? I mean, because, you know, that uh, kind of positive uh, outlook for Portugal, because Portugal is a beautiful country, beautiful place and beautiful people, right? And I think, you know, if we can leave people with a little bit of hope. Uh, for what can what how you know this concerned and maybe let's 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 finish it with that. Yeah, I, I as I said before, I I, I ask the immigrants, um, the good immigrants, to come um, to fight for for the the country that they chose for living, um, to the Portuguese people to stop these political little wars and to try to help and to mean themselves into Palestinian and Ukrainian and uh, and the Israel. And uh, this is, uh, it, listen, stop. Think about Portugal. Stop. Stop fighting against our own people. Stop being, when you talk about racist, don't be racist towards the Portuguese people, towards our country. You know, think what happens in other countries, the violence, the, 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 the insecurity that they are living in Spain, already in Portugal, is not going to be small. No, it's going to increase. It's going to increase. So I beg to these people to stop with um, be worried about all of that, whose side is right? In wars, there is no right side because it's not the people 
are to blame for the war. It's the ones that stir the pot. So do not be stupid. Be smart. And the way to fight is to come together. It's to come together and fight for our valors, for our tradition, for our language, and for our sovereignty. We do not, we cannot surrender our sovereignty to any organization whatsoever. I'm going to finish with the words that I've said also in the European Parliament. Be aware that if anyone surrender our sovereignty to a third part, that without consent and full information of the people, that will be high treason to homeland. This is what says our constitution. So, immigrants that chose our country to live in and Portuguese people defend the constitution and defend our country. That's what I'm asking. That's very simple. And that's what I'm asking. That's, that's what I hope in this political campaign for elections to hear from the politics and the candidates that are running for the next government. You know, that's what mm -hmm. I hope for. That's Brilliant. it, my darling. Thank you, my darling. Um, it was a really yeah. great one. I, uh, I hope we, will, we can repeat it um, very soon, maybe with a different subject. We will see which way yeah. it goes. But I think it's very important that people, not only Polish people, but also any other people that watch uh, watch the stuff here. Because what we're missing currently very often, I think, is this these updates from how other countries are looking. We talk a lot about, you know, global, and we need this, we need this. But we lose the track that, you know, Europe as itself is a, is you know twenty seven nations and um it, and it is good to know what's happening in Portugal. It's good to to hear it from uh from Portuguese people from yourself and and so on. So thank you for that. And uh, I will I hope we well, can do one a quick uh, uh, recording pretty soon. Yeah, you're welcome. And um I'm so sorry if I I didn't give the romantic side of uh of uh, the story, but I prefer to give the reality side of the story and the truth. Um, so in the future, we can all live in a romantic way, in a safe way in the, our own countries. I really love Portugal and I love to be Portuguese. Bye-bye, my love.